Hi, welcome to the channel, welcome to another video. Uh, yes, I'm at the February uh, NEC show. Um, a bit disappointed because there's no Swift there in as a factory um, stand uh, and also no Eldis. So that's a little bit disappointing. Although I believe Eldis will definitely be back this time next year because they're having a major relaunch. Um, something which I think they're well overdue to be quite honest. And I've said that about like the Explorer range, but I must do a review on the Avantis and things when I get a chance. But what do I think? Oh, I'm down at the camping side. I've just been down to the Campland stand at, um, down here. And um, uh, Dominic was telling me about how it's been busy this morning and then it's sort of died of death a little bit and then it's come back on again. Um, and he says you get a lot of people coming down and, and looking and going off for a bit of a ponder and, you know, usually they, they strike a deal. Um, and like, you know, Camperlands are very, very experienced, as I've said before. There's also Pennine uh, folders as well. Now, I've just been talking to them and uh, they just do three models. They just carry on doing what they do. They don't go out to make masses of, of, of folders at all. Uh, they've just got a small staff. They keep plodding along nicely. They've got a good customer loyal base to bring on new customers. And with the hybrid cars and everything, trailer tents and camp folding campers could be the way forward for a lot of people. Um, and they are more affordable than a conventional caravan. Now, um, there's nothing really new at the show at all regarding caravans. And our son somebody knows about motorhomes. And they were saying there's nothing really new on the motorhome side either. So I think the February show is probably a show that people have come in, in um, October, had a look around, maybe had a mooch, and then come to make a, a, a final purchase maybe. Um, but I was going to talk to them at Bailey, um, and they were telling me that they've had a good February, a uh, good end of January. Uh, the GT75 Phoenix is doing particularly quite nicely. Uh, and I've done a rating on that. I've only done reviewed one of their cameras, but I am going to be doing some more of those uh, of, of Bailey vans actually. It's just I've never got round to really doing the right lot. So I, I do need to do some. Um, and same with Eldis again as well. I need to do a few more Eldis vans. So yes, I'm here. I'm on a wander around. As you'll see from the snippets um, and the videos, uh, what I've just been sort of looking around having a look at. Um, will I come to the show again? Well, yes, I mean, obviously I've got to do, but I think it's a show that you need to come and have a look to. I think it's about 12 quid to get in, something like that. And there's lots here for you to see. Uh, as I say, a lot of camping stuff this year. Um, lots of tents. Um, and that's no bad thing, because I think it just brings people in who get into the outdoors, and then if they want to move on up, they might go for a trailer tent or a folding camper and then to a, a maybe a, you know a touring caravan um motorhomes are doing well of course i think that's always easy predictable i thought the motorhome bubble may have burst by now but it doesn't seem to be at all but i think um there's gonna be some discounting going on there's no doubt about it uh, so again if you're after a deal this is probably the best place to come and get your deal um, at the show but also you may get on the deals forecourts depends on where you go and what model you're after just talking to another trade dealer friend of mine he said the used market has been quite buoyant and family vans again will be in demand uh, so uh, especially lightweight stuff so I think really we're talking that as I say used stuff family vans at a good affordable price maybe 10 12 13 14 thousand maybe shooting off the forecourt or if you've got one to sell private that might be the way to go tell me if you're having you're selling one private and say tell me how you're getting on are you in some good leads or people trying to knock you down just let us know anyway i'll continue going around the rest of the show and showing some more snippets but i thought it needed a bit of a chat beforehand and uh, see what's what oh just one other thing adria noticed they've got a very small stand a few motorhomes on there and four caravans so that's a reduced size stand. Elders, of course, have said aren't here, uh, except on dealer stands, which again, it's a, I just find that a little bit of a downer. Um, I think this, this show needs support. It's been a good show. And ironically, I've just worked out that this is my actual 39th year here of continuous, apart from COVID, 
and 2012 when the show was moved to XL at one stage and they didn't use it but I still went to the XL show so I still count that as NEC. So my first show was 1985, February and I remember coming down here and it was snowing that day. There was about six inches of snow in the car park um, and um, yeah I th it was, I mean in those days the show was completely utterly, utterly different. Uh, there was more manufacturers around, a lot more dealers about as well actually. Um, and it's just a shame that those sort of days really have been and gone and I can't see them ever really coming back again which is a shame uh, a few people I've spoke to have spoken about the sad demise of Luna and I still reckon Luna would have done alright if they'd have concentrated on quality touring caravans got the quality right, lightweight I think they'd have really scored well and produced some of the models because I talked to some people and they still love Luna vans right I'm going to carry on and uh, I'll catch you up later on the video. I am uh, just here on the Avanti train. I'm going down by train this time instead of by car to the NEC. Um, I usually do a day or two over the NEC. Uh, I get to see a lot of people I don't normally see. I've got my, my granddaughter here keeping me company, haven't you? Yeah. So she's already into looking at the caravans, likes them. <laughs> so yeah. We just literally made the train as we got on the train, the doors that were shooting, it was like a mega, mega run. And I've just realised I'm not very good at running. Anyway, see you at Birmingham. Well, I'm at the NEC, good, good train journey actually, got there on time. Uh, granddaughter got a bit witchy, she was a bit tired and uh, normally in the car she'd have slept but she didn't in the train. Anyway, that's by the by. It looks a really busy day today, the sun is shining out there, it's a beautiful day actually. Um, and I've seen a few people I know uh, and I'll take a few more shots of the show. I know there's other YouTubers doing it and they're doing it probably far different better way than me but you know. I'm just doing it my own way, and that's how I generally do things, as you know. So, uh, just going to have a spot of lunch now with uh, an editor of mine. Uh, we get a chance to have a bit of a chat and a meet up and um, discuss uh, bits of things. And uh, yeah, so I must crack on.
This is going to be good, less stressful than going in the car. And do you know what? Our train got cancelled. We've had to come to Birmingham New Station. We've got to get a train from here to Crewe. And consequently now, we've got a 50 minute wait in at Crewe. And we think, my daughter thinks that that might even get cancelled. Which will be rather annoying. Uh, I think our train system is pretty duff actually. Uh, I've not been on the train for about seven years. I think it might be another seven years. So, what am I missing about? If I was in the car now, I'd be probably stopping off somewhere, have something to eat, a cup of tea, and cruise back home. Hey, YouTube. <laughs> My granddaughter has been very, very patient. She's, she's getting ready for something to eat soon. She's very interested in all these people coming back and forwards. Um, it's just mad. You know, I just thought, you know, we won't go in the car. I thought we'd just do everything as you should. You know, save on the, save going around up and down on the motorway and stuff and uh, and that. It's actually cost us a bit more to come here on the train than it would have done with the car in fuel. Because parking, of course, is free at the NEC for the car on show anyway. Um, so consequently, really, what we would have been better doing would have been probably better coming in the car after all. Yeah, yeah. So we're now at Birmingham New Street, as I say, um, waiting for our train to go up to Crewe. Um, then that'll drop us off, then we're waiting for another train then to get up to Preston, um, where the car's parked. And then the other problem we've got is the parking, because the parking was, uh, we prepaid the parking, but we couldn't get the scanner to work, so we have to put a ticket in for the parking. So when we get to Preston, we're going to have to explain that we've already paid. Um, and so see, <laughs> could be another one. I really think, you know, we, I mean, we've gone about the trains, and I'll tell you something, I can see why people get so frustrated. I'd hate to think I had to rely on this to get to work. And this guy I talked to today goes, I depend on the trains, I don't have a car. You know, he said, I sold my car, because I thought, I've gone to trains, they're cheaper than running a car. He says the trouble is it's all the inconvenience. And really, at the end of the day, there should be none of that. Not this day and age. Everything should be running tickety-boo, really, shouldn't it? So, yeah. So, we'll see how we get on. Anyway. Waiting for my daughter to come back. She's gone, gone to get a bit of food for, for Olivia. You right, Toots? You all right? She's gone camera shy. Oh, no. She's making a few noises. Granddad, get me pushing around. Right. I say my daughter's getting Oh, it's 10 o'clock. I finally got back. We're in Preston. All we've got to do now is get the car sorted out. So that'll take a bit of time. But anyway, at least we're back. Not quite as bad as we thought. Um, 50 minutes late. Which I don't too bad, really. Considering all the grief. But I've had to stand most of the journey back. Um, so consequently, yeah. We'll go on the train again. I don't know. I'll have to get the service far better done. Far better service needs to be done. I think the old steam engines were quicker. And I wouldn't say exactly it was a very comfortable ride either. It did a lot of rocking and rolling around. But anyway. Well, I came back for the weekend to the show. Um, and I mean, my reports are not going to be looking at that. I'll take snapshots and maybe video clips, etc. Um, so you know, if it's not what you you want to see. But anyway, I'll give you a bit of a, a review of this part uh, of the uh, show. It's been very busy today, uh, as you expect. It's half term, of course, and the kids go back on um, Monday. Um, I tell you what, I was surprised because I hadn't seen them before here. They're still coming down here in the camp a lot, and that's the, and that's the Freedom Caravans. I think it's time we did um, 
a what do you call it, a, a thing on, on freedoms. Um, it would be good to do something on them again. Because I think they've just got the place. Again, I think they're niche. They've been around for a long, long time. Uh, even in the UK, they've been around for a long, long time. And uh, I think we need to investigate these more um, and have a, another quick review on them, actually, and see what we think. I'll have to find a Freedom dealer or go and see them at the main place. I think there's one in Yorkshire, actually, if I remember. I know the guy, so I'll give him a nod this year and soon get um, uh, what they call it, a review. Um, but I'm glad to see the Freedom here, actually. Oh, there's a guy at the back there. Anyway, I haven't got time to, to chat because they're kicking us out. But yeah, I mean, camper vans, if you're after a camper van, you're spoilt for choice. And now we've got people like Swift and Eldis and Bailey now going solid into camper van conversions. Uh, so this market is really getting quite um, crowded. In fact, I'd say it's very crowded. Um, we've got names like Rolling Home, Vantage Motorhomes, Murphy. Um, some of the established ones uh, like Hillside and Wild Axe they're all here and you know if you've got that money and you want to get a camper van I'll tell you something now you are definitely smoke for choice always like Hillside stand I love that petrol the, that petrol station thing it looks brilliant so um, back here again on Sunday tomorrow. Uh, keep me here to the ground. See how the show's gone. Get a lot of mixed mixed reports. I think generally, you know, uh, it's been a hard show, and it always will be at this time. And in most of the prices as they are, um, one dealer has been moaning to me that used price is going to drop considerably. He won't stock any used, a lot of used vans because of that that problem and them losing value. So again, that's going to come up on a state of the market, uh, which I'm going to do hopefully the next week or two. Uh, might do it from a dealer's or whatever, or even from the conservatory. Anyway, I'm going to go, I'm going to shoot, I'm going to get something to eat and um, uh, go and see, uh, see what's what, see if I can pick up anything else on my travels. Well, I came back again to the show. This is the last day, this is Sunday, very busy. Um, regarding sales, from what I can gather, I don't think sales have been very good. Um, some are sort of saying they don't like the show, that's probably because they're not selling the vans. But I think there's a general shift anyway. It'll be interesting to see how the October show goes. Uh, not washing it, wishing to wish our lives away. But at the end of the day, um, there's been quite a lot of ease to see. I've, I've liked the new coach from panel vans, that's for sure, uh, as I've just been looking around now. But anyway, I'll tell you what I think at the end of it. And as I say, it's the last day. Um, so, so yeah, I'm just uh, seeing what's, what's what really now. Spoke to a few people. Met John, who was a subscriber, uh, who loved the channel, which is great. So it was brilliant and uh, a few other people that were knocking about but now it's getting late now on Sunday it's the show is dying down because um, I say came earlier on didn't do anything to that 
so really this video is just snippets from the show as I say um, uh, plenty camper vans as usual probably too many actually um, I say coach we've got two new camper vans there which are very smart uh, I think they're called affinities I think or, or I think it's the affinity I might be wrong on that one uh, just not thought of uh, the name but uh, on the whole yeah, there's been some good vans around um, we shall have to see what 2025 brings so the next show now for me will be probably Coachman Trade Show if they're having one and a few of the maybe little spies I'll get to see um, as I say I think Swift are coming out something something new for 25 on the Sprite range which is due it's very overdue anyway I'm going to sign off this video hope you've liked it um, as I say I know it's not been a detailed going through each one but it's just my opinion I've done the show now for 39 years there's nobody on YouTube I do know that's done that length of time on the show uh, next year I'll have done 40 God willing because you never know do you and um, I might do a bit of a comparison how it was and what some of the makes were around at that time um, as to compared to today because it's a very very different show of course because uh, in those days there was more manufacturers and there was a lot more families because there was lots of cheaper range of caravans but anyway that's another argument or another discussion time I think I'm going to come up with on a vlog uh, so anyway I'm going to sign off thanks for watching this I know it's been a bit of a long winded one and in and out and there's a train thing on there and all this that and the other um, but I must at some stage I do a few little interviews with people because I do a lot of talking to people on the trade uh, who I know and I know who will tell me the truth and I don't think some people want to put it on camera uh, and I won't certainly broadcast that but if I do it's in a very disguised way anyway I shall see you on the next video thanks for watching please keep subscribing and also um, keep liking and please send me your comments I love them thanks a lot see you on the next one